What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another VGC 2022 video. It feels strange saying that, but we are in 2022, and we now have the Series 12 aka VGC 2022 rule set. And yeah, I mean if you guys didn't watch yesterday's video where I explained the uh, rule set as well as some cores that I think might find some usage, be sure to check that out. Um, I uploaded that yesterday obviously, but today we're going to be talking about a core that I thought about and I've been using it on the ladder and it's been kind of nasty and I think that I should share it with you guys um, as just like an early metagame speculation thing. Uh, but if you guys enjoy this, at point I do a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And that's my comment question of the day. What Pokemon would you run next to Zamazenta? Spoilers, it's a Zamazenta core. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Also, I, I should say this, Patreon and Discord links down below. Check out both of those if you want to keep in touch with the community and uh, get some bonus content. But Zamazenta is a pretty bad restricted in many, many other formats, notably Series 10 and Series 8. Basically, it was hard to justify running Zamazenta in, um, well, I guess Series 11 is the same as Series 8. Um, but it was hard to justify running Zamazenta because it felt like more of a support restricted than anything. As you can see, common moves you would run would be like Howl to... Uh, boost the attacks out of Zamazenta as well as its partner. You would run Behemoth Bash, uh, as always, because it is pretty much just Behemoth Blade. Uh, we would run Close Combat because it's our strongest stab move, and the last move would usually be Protect, but you could also have access to moves like Snarl or Wide Guard. So it was a good like support Pokemon, and you would see it get used in that way um, in a couple of formats. In fact, if we look at it in Series 10, we might see a little bit more usage. Um, 0.12, that's pretty sad. But yeah, you can see like it has a pretty wide support move pool, uh, including Coaching. Um, and the fact that you only got one restricted in these formats made Zamazenta feel almost useless. Like, you weren't doing as much damage as other restricteds, and it pretty much felt like just a better high-tier Pokemon, and not like a, a legendary at all. Well, now that we have access to restricteds, it can shine in quite a few cores as a way of just buffing Pokemon next to it, notably with uh, access to the move Coaching. Um, and Snarl as well for uh, damage reduction on special attackers like Kyogre, uh, and especially Calyrex Shadow, which is going to be really good in the format. But, like I said, the fact that there's another Pokemon next to it means you're not locking yourself into a mediocre Restricted, but rather you're using that Restricted to buff another Restricted. And I would say that something interesting about this format is while you could just say, oh hey, you know, Groudon was always good, so if we put a Zacian next to it, it's just about as good as Groudon was now, but now we have a Zacian, since a lot of teams will be running Zacian, it's pretty much just like the same format, but with a Zacian on every team. That isn't necessarily true. Um, you'll find that certain combinations of Pokemon are greater than the sum of their parts, and I think that's especially true with the combo that I'm going to show you right now. I have found a lot of usage with uh, Zamazenta next to... Zygarde, and that sounds crazy, and I'm not going to show you EVs because it's so good that I'm like, okay, I think I might actually use this in a, um, if not a video, I might use it in like a, a tournament, so I'm not going to spoil it. Um, but Zamazenta plus Zygarde's nasty, and here's why. Zamazenta, as I said, has access to, you know, the general moves you want to run, uh, Close Combat and Behemoth Bash, as always, but Snarl is great, and rather than running Howl, we're going to want to run uh, Coaching. Now, why is this great? Well, Zamazenta as a Steel type uh, is able to cover the Fairy types that this thing just generally doesn't want to deal with. Notably, um, Xerneas is like the most common one, but sometimes you might see like uh, a Tapu Lele or other just stray Fairy types running around in the format uh, that Zygarde doesn't want to take a hit from. Uh, it's pretty much just Xerneas, but yeah, I mean, I guess Hatterene is sometimes used in Restricted, um, but it also deals with ice types in the format, uh, like Calyrex Ice. Calyrex Ice is so, so annoying, and Zamazenta can cleanly two-shot that thing with Behemoth Bash, uh, whether it's Dynamax or not, so that's super, super nice for it. But what Zygarde gets out of this more than anything is um, the way that Zygarde has historically been played in previous formats is you would always go with uh, Zygarde 50% and then Power Construct into Zygarde 100, uh, because basically what would happen is... Um, you know, you have your high base 108 HP with decent attack at 100, good defense, or like great defense at 121, and good special defense at 95, and just good stats all around, right? And you would just coil, get a Misty Seed from Misty Surge, Tapu Fini, block any kind of status, as well as getting that uh, special defense boost, and then you would just coil up until you get below 50% health. 
at which point you're gonna enter your complete form which doubles your hp meaning that you're essentially back at full you can pretend like you're a full hp zygarde regular um for like the turn that you're at 50 percent and then as soon as you heal pulse back up to 100 percent this thing has absurd bulk you have at least one coil up you have at least your misty surge activated and you're at full health with 216 base HP. The amount of hits this thing can take is insane. You can like actually after a coil, as soon as you go for um, the complete form at full HP, you can like tank glacial lances and stuff. It's an absurdly bulky Pokemon at that point uh, because you have that naturally high HP stat plus the really, really good defense stats buff to hell. Now, because you're focusing mainly on buffing, um, you don't really run much attack investment. You like would typically only dump whatever's left over after you get like the you know, spread you want to use to, like, live certain moves. Um, you know, you would just, like, put your leftovers into attack. But that's fine, because Koyo boosts your attack, meaning that you're actually dealing, like, decent damage uh, with your stab thousand arrows, which hits flying-type targets, meaning you don't have to run, like, rock coverage or anything, uh, and also smacks them down, so it combos into other Pokemon. Uh, but also, you would run <clears throat> Iron Tail, which would boost your defense stat so you have your special defense boost off of max quake and your physical defense boost uh boost off of um max steel spike meaning that you just get bulkier and bulkier as you dynamax and speaking of dynamax when this thing dynamaxes its hp stat is 646 for reference the highest hp stat in the game right let's look at blissey max that thing out 362 you are almost double a blissey's hp stat with good defenses and in, like in good speed and good offense like it is a crazy crazy bulky pokemon with great um you know attack stats after the ball or after the the buff sorry it's I'm, I'm tired and it's late and i'm trying to record this before i go to sleep so i might fumble my words a little bit but the reason this combo so with zamazenta um isn't just the fact that this covers for you know defensive weaknesses but the fact that this thing gets coaching and snarl meaning that you can increase this thing's longevity on the special side with snarl by snarling like um opposing xerneas or um calyrex shadow rider or kyogre going for like ice beam right but you can coaching basically giving it another coil so if you coil and coaching on the same turn and this thing has a good speed stat meaning it's going to outspeed quite a few pokemon that will allow you to basically get a free plus two meaning that you're like your, your Zygarde, if it is 50, in 50% form, it's eating hits so, so well that you're just gonna like go down to like 60% before Dynamaxing. And then you Dynamax and then you go down to like 49 and then you get your, your max form. And then Tapu Fini comes in and you just sweep things. It is a crazy combo that has been pulling its weight, honestly. Um, Pokemon that you typically see next to this thing, I'm not gonna you know, go through my whole team that I'm running. Um, but obviously Incineroar is great next to it for uh, further damage reduction. Uh, you could run uh, a Galarian Zapdos uh, to try to, you know, keep people from wanting to go for Intimidates for Seer Zygarde. Because obviously this thing is pretty Intimidate weak. Uh, it doesn't like Landorus particularly. Uh, it struggles with Intimidate in that sense. And if they set up on you, you know, a plus two max air stream will do quite a bit to this thing if you aren't able to get off a coil. Uh, so that's a little bit annoying. So being able to threaten things with like Zapdos or what I'd prefer to use, honestly, uh, Defiant Thunderous is really, really nice. And Defiant Thunderous also covers for the Kyogre matchup because it gives you a strong physical attacker with electric coverage uh, that does, you know, just crazy damage to Kyogre, usually just out outright one-shotting it. Other things you can consider, uh, Clefairy is great for redirection. Uh, it also gets access to moves like Life Dew and I believe it gets Heal Pulse. I want to double check that. Um, it does get Heal Pulse, but Life Dew might be a little bit better for keeping the Clefairy on the field longer. And you also reduce damage with Friend Guard, so that's really, really nice. Um, I, yeah, I mean, like, just these three is, are crazy. I've been calling it ZZ Top, because Tapu Fini and Double Z, so, you know, that's what I'm calling it. Let me, let me just label that. From now on, this core will be named ZZ Top. Um, but yeah, like, other Pokemon I could see being really good next to this thing. Uh, Amoongus. Pollen Puff is crazy under Trick Room, uh, because you're going to be able to get off that fast recovery on your Zygarde, as well as, once again, Rage Powder Redirection and Spore for putting things to sleep. Obviously, you have to be careful with Tapu Fini's Misty Surge, making it so you can't Spore certain things, but um, yeah, like just being able to put things to sleep and keep your Zygarde uh, protected, letting you set up is really, really nice. Um, other Pokemon that could be good next to this thing, I mean, like you already got like the Steel and Fighting type covered, you have your Water type, you have your Grass type. 
um I mean like a fire type is usually pretty good obviously incinerator is going to be nice here uh but further fire types that you might want to use uh let me think about this for a sec i feel like you could get away with running um what is it called oh, i can't think of the of the pokemon you could get away with like running an entei on this thing uh because it can't be intimidated it's another solid source of damage output uh and it allows you to burn pokemon with sacred fire if your finny hasn't set up you know the um the terrain yet but i guess if you want to like go for a free sacred fire versus a landorus if you think they're going to swords dance uh you might as well you know you get that damage off and you could get a possible burn so yeah uh i don't know if this thing wants to be run next to a trick room pokemon like amoongus does good under, under trick room right but like as far as trick room setters i don't really know um porygon 2 could be interesting purely because porygon 2 has access to like eerie impulse and solid recovery meaning your team is just super super bulky uh but yeah like generally like this team is super linear it's just like these three pokemon that matter the most you definitely want an incineroar and then like the other two pokemon are kind of up in the air uh you want something to incentivize your opponent to not go for intimidates so um you know like an entei could be okay uh a <laughs> thunderous obviously is gonna be like ideal but yeah uh, that's really all I have to say about this so far. Uh, it, I guess, you know, matchups it does well against. Uh, just Zacian hates playing against this. Zacian gets annihilated as soon as you get a coil off, uh, plus a coaching. Uh, the Intimidate cycling is also very bad for it. Um, Xerneas doesn't do very good versus this, because after a Misty Seed boost and you get your, like, your max form, your complete form, uh, Zamazenta obviously has good damage, out versus, uh, damage output versus it with Behemoth Bash. And like I said, you know, at plus one, you take like almost nothing from a Moonblast. So yeah, uh, Calyrex Shadow also hates this matchup because Snarl does uh, great damage versus it and lowers the damage output quite a bit. So yeah, I mean, like there's just a lot you can do with this team. It's super flexible and it just feels reliable. It feels like it isn't as matchup dependent as other cores are. So yeah, I just wanted to like get this rambly video out for you guys today. I'm really tired. I'm going to go to bed, but I have been testing this quite a bit and it's been really fun. So I hope you guys... Uh, you know, leave your versions of this easy top down below. Uh, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm super sleepy. Good night. <laughs>